I'm going to offer a brief overview of the state of DevOps report from this year. Um, I'm going to bet that folks have probably some familiarity, but you may not have much. And we also want to point out a few particular things that we're uh, focused on, but definitely encourage uh, everyone to read the full report if you haven't had a chance and also to check out previous reports because uh, there's something new and interesting in every one of them. Next slide, please. And next slide again. So one of our kind of core findings, and of course we found this throughout the years, but this year uh, some of the, the, the parts that jumped out at us in terms of driving organizational performance through software. Uh, the importance of organizational and team culture, right? Uh, DevOps is often spoken of as being made up of people, practices, and tools. And, you know, the culture, the people culture is really at the root of so much of what we can do. It's hard, but we find that it's worth it. We did a deeper dive this year than ever before into reliability. Uh, and by reliability, we mean the multifaceted measure of a team's abilities to meet the expectations of their users. And I'll get into some of this um, a, a little bit later on, but we found that it really uh, interacts with a lot of other things and is a really important part of driving that organizational performance. In fact, it's essential. And finally, the use of cloud computing technology is, uh, we've seen a strong predictor of organizational performance. Next slide. Um, so security is such a hot topic uh, lately with good reason. There's been um, a lot of, of, of challenging security things going on in the software industry lately. And as a result, setting out on this year's report, we really went into it with a very strong security mindset. Um, and um, we found that not only is security something that you know is obviously important, necessary as a, a defensive practice, but it also has benefits to the software delivery industry as a whole or, or, or your, your whole factory of software. Um, for one thing, security to teams that really have um, better security practices have lower burnout, um, less stressed people, as well as they're more likely to deliver on organizational performance. So we see the security is both sort of a defensive and a proactive thing at the same time. Next slide, please. Um, context matters. Uh, and, and what we mean by this is that something that we saw this year to a greater extent than ever before is the, the nuanced interaction between different parts of the, the practices and outcomes that we studied. So for one, we saw that um, software delivery performance has always been something that we've shown to be predictive of organizational performance. This year we saw a, an effect where it only is predictive when operational performance is also high. What we mean by that is Software that isn't reliable. If you have a, don't have a base level of reliability, we don't see a, a benefit to the organization from shipping faster or even shipping fewer defects. We need that consistent operational reliability. Once that bedrock is in place, then achieving faster velocity and faster and, and fewer defects is good for the organization. Um, software supply supply chain security uh, is something that, as I mentioned has a positive effect on software delivery performance, but only when we have continuous integration in place. And, and finally, a lot of the capabilities that we've been studying for years and are generally acknowledged as predictive of overall success, we find that they really amplify each other. And uh, it, it, we kind of therefore encourage a, a continued improvement across all of these dimensions. Um, while you want to identify your bottleneck and focus on it, you also want to make sure you're not leaving other things too far behind because the amplification factor is really powerful. Uh, next slide, please. And that that approach of continuous improvement is, you know, is such a, a core part of how we approach DevOps, and our research has has backed that up. The teams that have the attitude, the culture of recognizing that continuous improvement is essential, those are seen to outperform the ones that don't appreciate that um, that philosophy. Next slide, please. So uh, how do we compare? This is, you know, frequently the, the meat of, of the report, and we have some surprises this year. So um, as ever, we do a cluster analysis, right? Uh, across our four key software delivery metrics, we do a clustering analysis to see where there are groupings, you know, like uh, responses that, that are, are, are like each other. And um, from 2014 to 2018, we saw three groups, low, medium, and high. In 2019, we saw four groups, low, medium, high, and we named the, for the, uh, the fourth one elite. And, um, and that held through last year. But then this year, again, the, the analysis revealed three clusters of results, and they are low, medium, 
and high. Next slide, please. And looking at those clusters and, and how they've kind of evolved over time, um, what we see is over the years, every one of our clusters has gotten better relative to its former self. So by that, what I mean is the 2019 mediums are higher performers than the 2018 mediums. And the 2021 mediums are higher performers than the 2019 mediums. This year, we saw a huge um, bulk of the respondents in that medium, which is better than medium was last year. Um, a, a, a smaller number in high, uh, that, that, that bucket shrunk, though those performers are doing better than the high performers were last year. And then just nothing, it, there was no a, a group that broke out and broke ahead of the pack to be called elite. Instead, the high performers have moved up, but the elites seem to have sort of been absorbed back into the pack. Um, we have some hypotheses about why this might be. I'm not going to elaborate those. I think that's a great topic for discussion, but it's, it's an interesting phenomenon uh, to see this you might even call it like a reversion to the mean, although I don't know if the statisticians in the room would allow me to use that phrase. Uh, next slide, please. Reliability is this concept that we started studying a, a couple reports ago, continue to, to report this year, and we recognize that it's a fifth key, a fifth important metric of an overall software delivery um, process. And what we did this year is we folded it further into our overall analysis, looking at it both as an input and an output of Teams um, processes. Uh, next slide, please. And using reliability as part of the analytical model, we found a new set of clusters. And, and these clusters are not linear the way the low, medium, high, and, and elite are. Instead, each of them has sort of strengths and challenges relative to each other. Um, but the, the data do reveal that these are clusters within the data that are grouping together. So we, um, as you can see from the, the, the chart, there are the uh, each one has a kind of a typical um, uh, result on each of our, our four uh, or each of our five, including reliability for our five key metrics. And then, you know, we uh, we, we made sort of a, a characterization of them based on what we observe and what we kind of suspect might be going on inside those organizations. And we've given the names starting, flowing, slowing and retiring, starting being, um, you know, relatively immature on all of these metrics, we, we think this might relate to kind of a, a, an early phase product. Flowing are the ones that are really exceeding across all of the board, um, shipping fast, shipping reliably. Slowing uh, are teams that are shipping less frequently, um, and, and maybe we suspect are, are less invested in really evolving their software. And then retiring is going to be organizations that are, you know, keeping the lights on, maybe but 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 these seem to be maybe applications that are on the way out because they're just not being rapidly evolved um next slide and then the next one again so how do we improve what do we do to to get better across these software delivery metrics um as i mentioned culture we've seen that culture is so important and that western model of organizational culture where there's high trust and a lot of information flowing between people uh it we found is predictive of higher organizational performance uh flexible work environments uh are really helpful to decrease burnout and um cloud users actually that use of that that tool and the capabilities that it unlocks uh it can help with job satisfaction and, and reduce burnout next slide so SRE, uh, for the second year, we really invested in, in, in analyzing reliability engineering practices. And um, so we found a, a few key things that, that stood out to us this year. Um, the first, as I mentioned, is that reliability is a kind of a necessary factor in order for software delivery to be good for the business. We also saw the, uh, the emergence of a J curve. And um, this is really interesting because I feel like it's something that we've experienced so much, you know, anecdotally, uh, every one of us has probably had setbacks as we tried to do something new. And we saw that it happened across our respondents. So teams that had a, a little bit of adoption of SRE, you can see this in the chart here, saw reduced or, or, or stable reliability outcomes. But then after they hit kind of a, a threshold, a, a tipping point, we start seeing this real like, you know, monotonic increase in reliability as they continue to evolve on SRE. Um, and finally, the importance of culture. Generative team culture is predictive of higher reliability. Next slide, please. 
So um, just briefly, uh, we know the importance of these technical capabilities. Again, we saw that these, these things are really important to software delivery. So version control, continuous integration, continuous delivery, loosely coupled architecture. When these are all combined together, when you have that combinatorial uh, factor, what you get is 3.8 times higher organizational performance. Next slide, please. Okay, security, as I mentioned, this is a, a real key focus point for us this year. We studied security in a couple ways. We operationalized it in a couple ways. There are two frameworks that we took advantage of. One is SLSA, uh, it's also called Salsa, which is uh, reflects kind of practices and, and, and techniques used to secure the software supply chain. And the other is the SDDF or something like that. I probably have that acronym wrong. Um, and that comes thing that comes from NIST, uh, NIST, and it's more of about uh, approaches and, and, and attitudes towards how we do security, more of an organizational level. And we studied both of these and we found in both cases, um, thank you, thank you, Nathan. We found in both cases, especially in the SLSA, that uh, there's a lot of work being done, a lot of adoption has happened. Teams are already embracing these approaches to security. Culture is a head start. So the teams that have that generative culture are going to have an easier time adopting modern security practices. Um, there is a key integration point, which is CI. Uh, that is that in order for security, these new security frameworks to be useful, we find that teams need to have advanced CI capabilities, and uh, and and you know I think that those who have been following the research know about this phrase shift left. Um, we all know that in order to have security happen earlier, we need to have the machinery in place so that it's not a manual process. And then finally, it provides unexpected benefits. And by that, what we mean is that um, we found that software security itself is actually a key mediating factor, a driving factor of organizational performance. So great software delivery is good for the organization. Great software delivery, uh, or let me back up, great software is good for the organization. Secure software delivery practices themselves are good for the organization. In fact, a lot of the mediation pathway goes through those security practices. So to, to oversimplify, uh, if you want to have a successful business, invest in software securing your software uh, supply chain, it will actually uh, predictively benefit the organization as a whole. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nathan. All right, thanks so much, Dave. And uh, I'm gonna start by asking two very open-ended questions, but I don't want your answers just yet. So what questions do you have about the report? And maybe just as importantly, what surprised you most? Look, I think that each year as, as, the, as we release the research that we found, uh, it is right that everyone across the industry views, view the research and the report with a little bit of skepticism. We are, after all, scientists and are on a scientific endeavor. We really gather as much data as we can, uh, analyze it in the best way that we know how, and then share it with the community so that we can all learn from one another. And in fact, we're really happy that you all are here today because we want to dig into these questions and continue learning from one another.